It's Wednesday, October 14th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Let's take a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, fly the friendly skies. A commercial airliner that normally caters to tourists will now fly migrants directly from the Middle East to Sweden. In the latest example of how the European welfare state is rolling out the red carpet for refugees. Then, nothing to see here, no worries, this is probably just a pep rally. Although residents from this town in Germany are a little concerned over massed migrants with sticks and pipes chanting Allah Allah Akbar. <laughs> and it's about time. A Democrat calls out hypocrite politicians with armed guards. There are people at high levels in this government who have bodyguards. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Top story tonight on Infowars.com. New airline to fly migrants directly into Sweden. A commercial airliner that normally caters for tourists will fly migrants directly from the Middle East to Sweden in the latest example of how the European welfare haven is rolling out the red carpet for refugees, the vast majority of whom aren't even from Syria. And this is basically reported out as Spicer. It's also on STV, the Swedish top public broadcaster. Ahmad Zand and Suzanne Najafi have started the airline Refugee Air to fly refugees from camps in the Middle East directly to Sweden where they can seek asylum. The planes used to transport the migrants are usually reserved for tourists traveling to and from Scandinavia, but will be repurposed. And so basically these migrants, they promise us, will be vetted to uh, assure that they're genuine, legitimate migrants. But as we know, from the reports coming out of the people smugglers, large numbers of these migrants aren't even from Syria. They're economic refugees, economic migrants fleeing to a higher standard of living. And the UN's own figures, the UN's own numbers that were published a few weeks ago, concluded that only one in five are actually Syrian. So we're being sold this whole humanitarian crisis on the basis that the overwhelming majority of these refugees are fleeing ISIS, they're fleeing war, they're fleeing persecution. That's only true for one in five. And even of those one in five, many are committing fraud by claiming to be Syrian, producing fake documents given to them by these people smugglers who they pay thousands of dollars to get to Europe. So as many cultural commenters have noted, Sweden is basically committing cultural suicide. 80,000 migrants have already entered Sweden since the 1st of September, and the police say that half of those have gone underground. That's just since the 1st of September. 40,000 migrants have disappeared into the underground in Sweden. And why do they say that they're committing cultural suicide? Well, it's because top politicians in Sweden are now openly calling for jobs, for welfare, for free housing, not only to be given to migrants, but to be given to returning ISIS jihadists. This is the liberal basket case that is Sweden, and it's only going to get worse on the back of this policy. Of course, last month we reported how a top Swedish bishop in Stockholm, Sweden, is calling for crosses, Christian crosses, Christian iconography, to be removed 
and replace with Muslim symbols, again, to appease the migrants that are flowing into that country. Housing, there's a huge housing shortage in Sweden, and yet residents are being told to turn over their garages to house these migrants. They're also the country's taxpayer-funded expert. This is completely insane, and again, it illustrates the liberal radical basket case that is Sweden. The country's taxpayer-funded expert on Islamophobia went on to join ISIS. And now they're saying that these ISIS radicals can come into the country, get free welfare, get free jobs, all taxpayer paid for, and now direct flights, which were used for tourists, are now going to be used to bring in these migrants, of course, many of whom aren't even legitimate Syrian refugees. Moving on to our next story now, tiny German village forced to accept 1,000 migrants. Officials mystified by complaints. This is out of Breitbart.com. Villagers in a tiny rural area of Lower Saxony in Germany are demanding answers after it transpired that their village, with a population of just a few hundred, will be forced to accept 1,000 migrants due to Angela Merkel's decision to throw open her country's borders. And so basically the mayor in this tiny town of just a few hundred people was shocked to discover that the residents of that village would even have a problem in the first place with over a thousand migrants. And that's just the initial number arriving, you know, without any concerns whatsoever. This is basically 300 people in a tiny village in Germany. A packed public meeting was held last night in this village called Sumte to discuss local concerns over the migrant influx and Spiegel Online reports that it didn't go well. And <laughs> that's not a big surprise. The town hall was the venue. It began with the mayor and local officials expressing utter surprise that anyone could possibly be worried by so many newcomers. Like they thought that people wouldn't have a problem with this. Imagine if you lived in a village of 300 people. You know, people have lived there for generations. It's remained the same. Their culture has remained untouched. And this could go for Germany. It could go for any other European country. It could go for any country in the Middle East. If you flood a village of 300 people with a thousand people from a completely different culture, many of whom don't even speak the same language, then obviously there are going to be problems. There are going to be people concerned about that. But again, don't dare criticize it if you're a German citizen on social media, on Facebook, because the German government in concert with Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook have literally hired ex-Stasi officials to hunt down dissent to censor online criticism of these kind of policies, and in extreme cases, maybe even have their children taken. So this is the situation in Germany right now. And the local officials are, you know, perplexed about the fact that people would even be up in arms about this, would even have a problem with it in the first place. Absolutely ludicrous. And again, as we saw in Sweden, Germany is committing cultural suicide. And this ties into our next story out of Infowars.com. Video, masked migrants chanting Allah Akbar rally in Germany with sticks and pipes. Let's look at an example of some of these tolerant migrants who will be arriving into Europe. Let's take a look at this clip. So there you see an illustration of some of the migrants arriving in Europe, in Sweden, in Germany, where again the local officials are completely mystified that anyone would have a problem with this. Now, of course, not all the migrants are like that, but as we've documented on Infowars.com, the behavior of some of these migrants is not being covered by the mainstream media. BBC, all these different networks, will show the migrants arriving, for example, in German train stations, you know, with the tolerant liberals applauding and cheering them as they arrive. What they don't show is footage like that 
They don't show migrants robbing Hungarians at a train station in Budapest. They don't show migrants rampaging and rioting through towns, you know, as they tear down uh, lampposts and all manner of other things. That's not what they want you to see because they need you to be tolerant, again, while many of these migrants are completely intolerant. So again, would you be comfortable with those kind of people moving into your town? And in some cases, as we just mentioned, moving into a village of basically 300 people, a thousand of them, especially given these reports that we've covered out of migrant camps in Germany of them raping women and children, not only raping German women and children, but other migrants within the camps. And that ties into our next story out of the Daily Mail. The English village being overwhelmed by migrants as dozens arrive every day. An English village has been left overwhelmed by asylum seekers, residents complained last night. Longford in West London is fast becoming a transit camp for migrants from Calais, with dozens arriving on coaches every day and being transferred to houses, according to locals. And here's the testimony of one of the locals who's lived there for a long time, Ray, 85, who lost his wife four years ago and has lived in the village for 50 years, said, quote, I've got them either side of me. So they meet, they have conversations in the middle of my front garden. And you see from the pictures here, they're basically hanging around with, in people's gardens, having conversations. They're congregating in large groups outside local pubs, outside local shops, and people are basically afraid to go anywhere near them. So it's killing business in this local village. They're basically just sitting on people's walls, you know, walking around their gardens. Because again, like in Sweden, like in Germany, there's no integration policy whatsoever. They're just letting these hordes flow in. You know, no language training, no, integra no integration. And it's going to cause massive social upheaval. And again, the point is, as you can see from those images, most of them are black. They're from Africa. Okay, there's virtually no black people in Syria. So these aren't Syrian refugees. So why are we being fed this narrative over and over again that these are Syrian refugees when they're not? They're economic migrants fleeing to a higher standard of living. And now in Germany, in Sweden, people are finally beginning to raise whimpers of, of dissent against them. And the local officials, again, are just mystified, like, how could they even consider that this might be a problem in the first place? Well, it is a problem, especially given the reports out of the Gatestone Institute, which we've covered, which show that in these migrant camps, not only are they making complaints about, you know, slow Wi-Fi and poor food, but there are many cases of rapes in these camps of the other migrants entering those camps. And it's being covered up by the media, by the police in Germany. Germany's top broadcaster, ARD, they had a Crime Watch style series where one of the cases was these migrants going out and raping somebody, or at least a suspect in a rape. They refused to broadcast the story because they said it could upset the migrants coming into the camps. Again, no concern for the actual rape victims, both the migrants within the camps and the local population. And the police, we've confirmed, are covering up cases of rape in Germany because they don't want to, quote, give ammunition to critics of mass immigration. So it's not about protecting the victims of rape. It's about steering this narrative. And now that that information is slowly beginning to seep out, people are becoming really concerned about this. So we're going to stay on top of this. We're going to tell you what the media is not telling you. More news coming up after the break, but Hillary Clinton will be in town tomorrow. She's visiting San Antonio and we're going to be there to cover it. Here's Joe Biggs and Alex Jones with more information. All right, folks, Alex Jones here with Joe Biggs. Now, we were going to uh, be covering Donald Trump coming to San Antonio tomorrow uh, to speak to the uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, but Trump had a big fallout, a big fight, so he's not going. Hillary Clinton's going to be there. And they're just invoking that it's racist if you want to have any border at all. Well, Mexico has a tighter border with Guatemala than any other country in this hemisphere. One year hard labor if they catch somebody sneaking in. So, so countries have borders, and it's just...